Welcome to the NTN Nightly. I'm Nisha Charles. This edition's top stories. The government of St. Lucia prioritizes culture as it taps into the orange economy. One of St. Lucia's most prolific sons is a celebrated cultural icon. A $6 million slope stabilization and drainage project to enhance flood mitigation in Castries Southeast. All that plus the latest developments in youth and sports and the NTN Nouvelle Aquail. The government of St. Lucia has placed culture and creative industries as one of the top 10 priorities for development. The new term being used to define culture and creative industries is the orange economy. Minister responsible for culture and creative industries, Senator Honorable Fortuna Belrose, believes that the industry can be maximized for economic growth. It is with this in mind that my ministry is currently revisiting the cultural policy and putting in measures to quantify the contribution of the orange economy to the GDP of our country. In the coming months, my government will also unveil the Cultural and Brand Ambassadors Program, for which we will salute and celebrate the contribution of people of the arts, and not only arts, but sports and music, etc. We are also working on ensuring that we have adequate legislation to ensure that our actors can get maximum benefit and incentives from the development of their skill and craft. Senator Honorable Belrose is cognizant of the role that the services sector plays within the creative industries and says that government has begun to put the legal framework in place to grow this new orange economy. Cabinet has already approved the Service Act which will grant incentives, uh, a, a service, um, working on service, sorry, service act or legislation, which will grant incentives and concessions to the service sector, such that we will move and foster greater economic growth um, within the orange economy that we speak about. One such avenue, of course, is the cultural satellite accounting, which I mentioned earlier. And of course, hopefully that will enable us to be able to quantify, analyze the data coming through and quantify the contribution of culture to our economy. This information, of course, will allow for a better informed policy and of course, more appropriate decision making um, in the area of culture. Meantime, the highly anticipated cultural icon series staged by the Cultural Development Foundation was launched Friday. The series showcases and honors St. Lucians who have made an indelible mark on the national artistic landscape. The Cultural Development Foundation's CDF Cultural Icon Series aims to make connections and provoke conversations about the development of art and culture in St. Lucia. The newest addition to the series, Vincent Joseph Udovic, has been described as a man of undoubtable and invaluable talent who displays his love for art and culture through his sculpture pieces. On Friday, October 25, the CDF unveiled the Vincent J. Udovic Sculpture Art Exhibition, which it hopes would create an environment for persons to find passion and freedom of expression. Minister responsible for culture and creative industries, Senator Honorable Fortuna Belrose, says it is by finding purpose that one can contribute meaningfully to society. Our Icon series is about celebrating our people. These are persons like you, yes, like you, who have found their passion and use their passion as a conduit to contribute to the development of our society. You see, when you find the way to express what you want or who you are, you are in fact pursuing your own independence. And what do I mean by independence? I'm speaking of a state of mind and being and in a place, being in a place where one is focused on being proactive, always beginning with the end in mind, putting first things first, setting priorities you know, and valuing others' contribution in the space. In 2018, the Cultural Development Foundation introduced the edutainment component of the ICON series, which seeks to educate students about the ICONs through various platforms. 
This year, the focus was on the island's west coast from Babano to Bhutan. Director of Events and Production at the CDF, Junia Fredericks, elaborated on this year's undertaking. The program places emphasis on connecting our training programs with elements of production and showing young persons the value of the arts as a medium of change and what it's worth in economic returns. This year, we took a cross-section of young performers who came out of training programs from CDF and other programs in the arts done by other institutions and individuals. These young performers researched the life of Vincent Ludovic, created a concept and performed around 12 schools on the island. While the icon himself was not in attendance at Friday's ceremony, his daughter, Dawn Udovic, represented the art studio. She expressed profound gratitude to the CDF for featuring her father's work and the work that was done to make the exhibition a success. Really and truly, they put some vitality into the Udovic's and the Udovic Art Studio, the Udovic family, the Udovic um, art family. And uh, we really appreciate it. We really, really appreciate it from the, bottoms of our, the bottom of our hearts. The art exhibition will run until Tuesday, October 29, 2019. Creole Heritage Month this weekend enters its heightened phase with the hosting of Jeune Creole on Sunday, 27th October in the communities of Beau Grosley, Vieux-Fort and Choiselle. The organizing committees have been busy putting the finishing touches to the preparations. We have many groups and also WCK out of Dominica so coming on the night. But during the day, we have everything ranging from the weaving of the basket to the construction of the chairs, the logging of the wood. A lot of interactive games will be held on the day also. So there will be, there will be plenty to do for the family also before the actual part of the day comes on. But also during the day, a lot of local acts will be on. For example, the is in boys, the Clarolite dancers will be dancing the quadrille, Unity Band will be there also, along with Future Lights. Um, we have a good couple of local artists on this day also. Nisha Cross will be there with another artist of Lap and Shows that we call I Vision. So there's a fair balance in terms of the regional acts and the local acts on the day. So, um, groups. Um, just to name a few of them, we have um, our service, we have the different various groups, we have the Eastern Folk Band, um, we also have a soul band, More Fire, coming from Denry, we have storytellers, we have masqueraders and stilt walkers. Um, as people are coming into the venue, they're going to be greeted by the sweet sounds of St. Lucie Still Pan Orchestra. And of course, apart from the entertainment, we're also going to be having a very rich exhibition section um, where we're going to be having persons demonstrating live um, furry making, how do you make the furry, how do you make the cassava, and they're going to be having the platinum and all the different instruments that you use to do the furry making. We're going to be demonstrating um, local bread making. We also have a spindler. Twelve communities in Castri Southeast are set to benefit from significant investment geared towards reducing flooding and its debilitating impact. Residents recently met with government officials for the second time where they were updated on the projects. Experts responsible for the execution of the Disaster Vulnerability Reduction Project, DVRP, funded multi-million dollar slope stabilization and drainage works indicated that all the projects have been tendered under the approved World Bank procedures. Consulting engineer Lester Arnold indicated that the projects being undertaken include reinforced concrete retaining walls, gabion basket retaining walls, masonry retaining walls, and riprap's. He added that the projects are expected to be completed soon. What has been happening, the reason why we've had some delays, there are a lot of contractual arrangements for these projects. Like I said, because it is a World Bank project, there are certain criteria that we must follow, and that has to do with insurance of works and all of these kind of things. So the contractors who were, who were awarded are now in the process of doing that, and within the coming week, we should have major activity on ground and to hopefully have all of the works completed before Christmas. So that is one of the good things, that all of these projects will be completed before Christmas. If they are not, then it should be completed by early January because we really don't anticipate them going past that, that, that time frame. The consulting engineer also indicated that Glory Cedar trees will be planted along the riverbanks 
to help with slope stabilization. The aim of the project is to improve climate resilience in the communities. Minister for Economic Development, Housing, Urban Renewal, Transport and Civil Aviation and Parliamentary Representative for Castries South East, Honorable Guy Joseph, explained that the DVRP projects form part of a broader plan for the sustainable and holistic development of the constituency. He indicated that despite the projects coming on stream, residents also have a part to play in aiding the improved resilience of the community by for one ensuring proper disposal of garbage. The World Bank will be spending a lot of money in the years to come in all of the communities when it comes to flood mitigation. And that is, that is something that we just, we were just negotiating with them to get some additional resources to be able to continue to do the work. Because the work we are doing there is just a drop in the bucket. Ça pas qu'à empêcher bec son flan. Vous comprenez? Là, on a chaque pli travail pour faire passer travail ça. But I want you to understand that we are doing the work that is required. We have selected the worst areas to focus on for now. Communities in Castry Southeast earmarked to benefit from the flood mitigation works a country village, Odsa, Badu Chaussé, Bel Air, Bexo, Wavin Poisso, Mac, Crownlands, Labaye, Sarat Gap, and Deir Bar. And this is the NTN Nightly. Up next, Ryan O'Brien is here. Be aware of and follow water conservation practices. Here are a few tips to help you save water. Wash dishes in a basin of water instead of a running tap. Soak pots and pans instead of letting the water run while scraping them. Check toilets for leaks by putting dye in the tank. If color shows in the bowl without flushing, there is a leak. A leaking toilet can waste thousands of gallons of water. Use a bucket instead of a hose to wash cars and reuse grey water from laundry to water plants. Water conservation reduces energy consumption and strain on the water distribution system. Conserve water whenever possible. And remember, every drop counts. A message brought to you by the Water and Sewage Company Incorporated, WASCO. Welcome back. We join Ryan O'Brien for the latest happenings in youth development and sports. Thanks, Misha. Welcome everyone to your update from youth development and sports on the NTN Nightly News. I'm Ryan O'Brien. We start with some results from the 2019 schools football competition. Big 8, Samiris College and Cicero Secondary play to a two-all draw on Wednesday. Sherquin President scored in the 14th and 49th minutes for SMC, while Kendall Henry scored in the 3rd and Vern Smith in the 58th for Cicero Secondary. Sir Arthur Lewis Community College dominated two for comprehensive five goals to one, Kevin Francis opened the scoring for Sir Arthur Lewis in the 4th minute, followed by Daniel Amede in the 14th, Turdyard Staver in the 50th, Rio Longville in the 32nd and 63rd minutes. In under-19 fixtures Thursday, John Odlam Secondary won a close encounter, 4 goals to 3 against 7th for the Adventist Academy. For John Odlam, Duane Louis scored in the 19th, Bershon Edward converted a penalty in the 46th minute, Claude Elliard scored in the 60th and Sanjay Francis in the 78th. For the SDA, the goal scorer was Sherman Augustine in the 23rd, 27th and 42nd minutes. Patricia D. James defeated Corrin's secondary four goals to nil. Scoring for Patricia James were Simeon George, 13th and 57th minutes, Jonathan Lionel in the 27th minute and Kobe Mears in the, eighth, in the 62nd minute. In some upcoming primary schools football fixtures, 16 team competition, matches set for October 29th. Crozelay takes on Rosa at the Saab playing field at 11 a.m. and Saray plays Moshi at 1 p.m. also at the Saab playing field. Marsha takes on Camille Henry at the Marsha ground from 11 a.m. and RC Boys tackle Patricia James also at Marsha from 1 p.m. And that's our update from Youth Development and Sports this weekend on the NTN Nightly News.
I'm Ryan O'Brien. Thanks, Ryan. The Department of Infrastructure, Ports and Energy will be carrying out road maintenance culvert cleaning works along sections of Hospital Road cash trees, including the link road between Hospital Road and the Millennium Highway for Ashore Main Road opposite the entrance to the cash tree seaport. Consequently, during the hours of 6 a.m. to approximately 11 a.m. on Saturday, 26 October 2019, it will be necessary to close the section of Hospital Road from its entrance near the Old Cemetery. No access will be permitted to Hospital Road through the Link Road opposite the entrance to the Cash Tree Seaport. Access to Victoria Hospital and other parts of Hospital Road to commuters, bus drivers, residents, etc. will be through Coconut, Coconut Road, the road behind Hardest Hard Restaurant and Bar, to a few meters away from Culvert Works for the duration of works, which is estimated at five hours between 6 a.m. to 11 a.m. on Saturday, 26 October 2019. Road closed and or road works ahead, signage will be posted to facilitate cleaning of culvert along the hospital road. Road users are to exercise due diligence in the immediate vicinity of the work sites. And stay with the NTN Nightly. Up next, Thomas Hutchinson is here with the NTN Nouvelle Arqueur. Lani Sim Tupatu, attention si vous êtes nom et bien fan. Visitez la santé pour examiner kou. Ça c'est un nid pour yon wè si lani pièce moun ou li moun ki ni maladi TB et bien maladi sexual. En compagnie moun ki ni maladi HIV pe ni TB aussi. Sav ki lani djerizon pou TB ou sa viv en bonne santé même si ou ni maladi HIV. Pale bay dokter ou. Pon responsabilite ou. Ede dou bout si me maladi TB et HIV. Ou aje tout moun pou examiner kou yon. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Arqueur. Merci, Uta Anisha. Merci, Madame du Département qui est responsable pour l'information au gouvernement de cette GIS. À ce moment, Télévision Nationale pays à NTN, Kaposato Nouvelle Arqueur. Kaposato, Primus Hutchinson. Pion Initiative des Champions d'échange. Veni en réalité comme CARICOM, oui, nécessité à pour bâtir résilience sociale en tous ces pays caribes là. Pour j'ai à chercher en qui meilleure façon pour réduire à ce crime généralement et violence à l'école ces pays là avant ces étudiants où ils veulent en l'âge adulte et bien majeur. Pour j'ai ça là, j'ai trouvé implémenté avant ça et puis l'école secondaire. Mais en l'année 2019, j'ai regardé pour engager les étudiants à l'école primaire aussi. C'est le c'est un assez sec membre à ce pays CARICOM qui devait choisir côté club champion d'échange qu'a établi. Chef en section pour projet contre violence à crime en bio CARICOM, Louis Dodson, déclaré que c'est le son qui a appris à étudier qui a conduit à l'école secondaire, c'est même qui a trouvé à étudier à l'école première. Le projet a été regardé à façon qui si effort ni pour faire pour réduire le crime, peut-être qu'il est nécessaire aussi pour qu'ils savent qui ça qui sera fait en l'école primaire. Et tu dois montrer que même ça qui a existé en l'école secondaire a manifesté en même façon. Par exemple, le plus fort qui a pris l'avantage à ce qui est plus faible, violence en parmi les vieilles compagnies et qui ont vu l'habitude sociale. Dans son dit aussi, je découvre la évidence que les étudiants à l'école primaire exposés pour même découvrir l'activité de violence là avec vieux compagnons, même contre les étudiants à l'école secondaire. Club de champions de change, qui a établi à l'école primaire, il a établi à l'école primaire Cicéron et à l'école primaire anglicane, à ce Canon Lorry, chef projet. Chef projet explique qu'il a choisi de l'école ça là parce qu'il y a tout ça qui mérite. Et c'est l'établissement, c'est l'âge assez. Il y a aussi une capacité pour développer le gymnase et puis l'autre qui est en même situation comme ça. Donc, c'est aussi une initiative là, sortie d'un assessment de situation risquable que vous conduit en mois de mars, l'année ici. Vous conduit ces assessements là, ni à l'école première et secondaire. Et vous présenté pour ça à une consultation et puis cette ici. Il y a ajouté qui Parmi ces recommandations qui sont sorties, c'est l'établissement Club des Champions de Change. Le club là, 
quand on va conduire les étudiants à l'école primaire qui est un plus gros grade et qui est supposé faire contribution pour collègues. Tout ça, là, qui est organisé ici en bas, sport, affaires sport, agriculture, et puis objectif là, pour développer affaires sociales à parmi l'autre étudiant. Pour que vous puissiez aussi un pays à Tigre et Barbuda, Guyana, Jamaïque et Suriname. Depuis l'année 2005, le pays de cette a établi cette règle pour gouverner la culture pays. Depuis ce temps, il faut continuer pour développer et renforcer la règle. Si vous avez un des affaires culturelles, le ministère des Affaires touristiques, Donalyn Vettet, a assisté à cette grande conférence pour les ministres de la culture dans ce pays Afrique, Caraïbe et Pacifique, ça c'est ECP, et là, il a trouvé l'occasion pour apprendre ces meilleures façons qui associe la société à ça, en bien, car vous pouvez. Ce que le Parlement a dit, c'est l'objectif là, c'est pour cimenter les décisions à ce WEXA là, et pour marier la culture et les affaires touristiques. Grand conférence là, il a cherché à quelle meilleure façon pour faire assessement des implémentations, ces commitments, et ces ministres de pays Afrique, Caraïbe et Pacifique là, ont fait en Brussels en l'année 2017, et pour aussi établir une position qui fort concerné culture et contribution à faire culture pour tout plan de développement sustainable. Ce que le Parlement a dit, il faut que le peuple caribé n'ait un plus fort voix en groupe ECPA. Cette deuxième conférence-là des ministres de l'Affaire culture est pour le 17 pour le 20 octobre. Comme tous les années, le département GIS, KTB, Lamé et puis le restant PIA pour observer et célébrer le journée créole. Journée Coyole, officiellement, c'est lundi le 28 octobre, à tout pays qui a observé Journée. En bureau de GIS, ces collègues-là viennent ensemble pour nous petit temps pour goûter manger Coyole pays. Alors, à nous à présent, goûter ou opinion concernant Journée Coyole et participation, parce que c'est les officiers de GIS là, à faire ça là. Vendredi bon matin. Il a fait nous changer l'héritage créole, nous, et puis il a fait nous venir ensemble en même travail, il a mené en unité en parmi nous. Alors nous avons célébré ensemble, ça a mené nous ensemble. Ce qui est-ce que vous manger ici aujourd'hui? Nous avons des belles bec roti, gros bec roti, nous avons la mori, nous tenons. Et puis nous tenons l'amour, oui, à un soir, nous tenons un pémi, nous tenons bec, et puis nous tenons dité caco, épaissi. Tous les tous les vendredis avant Julien Creole, nous avons fait ça ici. Nous avons nous avons mené bois, nous avons même mangé, nous avons you know venu ensemble, nous avons parlé, nous avons joué musique, nous avons fait ça. Moi, j'ai aimé Julien Creole. Il juste pas. C'est ça, c'est ça, nous, c'est ça, c'est ça, nous, c'est ça, c'est ça, nous, pour célébrer l'occasion de ça. Nous venons ensemble, nous sommes nous sommes chai by créole, nous sommes dité caco, nous sommes confiti coco, termin bol, et puis fois bagaille. Nous sommes là quand nous sommes en Nous avons même les droits de travail, mais nous sommes en t-shirt pour recommencer l'occasion de ça. Oui, Prime Actuellement, um, tout le monde JS, nous venons ici, à, nous allons manger, manger créole, nous allons parler de créole, nous allons écouter la musique créole. Si vous allez bien, nous allons danser créole. Je dis à nous allons célébrer tout nous à travail, nous allons porter manger créole, et nous allons faire musique créole, nous allons faire musique créole, nous allons faire de créole là aussi. Et monsieur, madame, c'est comme ça qu'il a passé en GIS, qui a célébré Jeune Coyole, comme qui a fait tous les années. Et c'est comme ça que nous avons une nouvelle vie, monsieur, madame, je vous remercie autant pour vous regarder, je vous invite à vous donner un conseil. Quand vous avez la vie, vous avez présenté une autre nouvelle Coyole. Je vous présente tout le monde une bonne fin de semaine, une bonne Jeune Coyole. Et ça, c'est le mon vie présenté au Nichel. Merci, M. Primus. Et here's a look at what's happening to us, weather-wise. Fair skies becoming cloudy at times with a few brief scattered showers. The lower atmosphere over our region will remain sufficiently moist and unstable to produce some showery periods over the islands during the next 24 hours. 
A weak tropical wave located several hundred miles east of the Lesser Antilles is moving very slowly westward at about 6 miles per hour or 9 kilometers per hour. Two other tropical waves located over the central and far eastern tropical Atlantic are moving westward near 12 miles per hour or 19 kilometers per hour. The tide for Castries Harbour was high at 1.40 p.m. and is low at present. The tide for VA4 Bay high at 2.47 p.m. and will be low again at 8.53 p.m. The seas slide with waves 2 to 4 feet or 0 0.6 to 1.2 meters. The sun will rise Saturday at 5.57 a.m. And that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Nisha Charles.